On behalf of my Daily Record colleagues, I welcome you to tonight's debate uh, between candidates uh, Becky Foster and Bob Graber, who are running in the May 8th primary for the uh, Republican spot uh, for Wayne County Commissioner. The winner will square off in November's general election against Rodney Mackey, who's unopposed in the Democratic primary. With the retirement of four-term Commissioner Ann Obrett, it's created a rare GOP primary for the commissioner seat. So this is a particularly interesting race, and since both candidates have run very spirited campaigns. It's our hope and our goal here at the Daily Record that tonight's forum will focus on the details of some of the key issues that will contribute to the ongoing discussion of the important issues facing our county. First, a few thank yous. Thanks to all of you for taking time tonight to attend tonight's forum. Thanks to the College of Worcester for providing the venue, and to Marjorie Champ, the Director of Campus Dining and Conference Services for her assistance. Thank you to the candidates for agreeing to participate and provide for this opportunity to hear them in person. And most of all, thanks to uh, the Daily Record readers who submitted questions for the candidates. Virtually all the questions that I'll be asking tonight came directly from readers or were compiled from, uh, uh, from more than 50 questions submitted by readers. I was really impressed with the quality of the questions. We had many more reader questions than we'll have time for tonight, so there will, as such, there will be no direct questions from the public. A bit of explanation about tonight's format. Each candidate will have a two-minute opening and a one-minute close. Candidates will have two minutes to answer each question with a one-minute re of rebuttal for each if desired. In one case, we'll be asking different questions of the candidates, so there won't be a rebuttal to that particular set of questions. We'll alternate which candidate goes first. Um, the order was determined by a coin toss, so Bob will go uh, first with the first question. The candidates have not seen the questions in advance. Part of what we hope to accomplish tonight is to demonstrate how well the candidates think on their feet and their grasp of the issues. This forum is being broadcast live on the dailyrecord.com and our Facebook page and a recording will be available later this evening on our website uh, for further viewing. And that for more information about the issues and contested races on the May 8th primary ballot, look to the Daily Record and thedailyrecord.com. So we'll get started with the introductory statements. Becky, you can go first. Okay, good evening and thank you everyone for coming here tonight. I grew up in Wayne County, Marshallville area, and attended Chippewa High School and the Wayne County Schools Career Center. I had an opportunity to work at Rubbermaid back when Rubbermaid was fabulous and growing uh, immensely under Stanley Galt and I worked Rubbermaid for 23 years. I went to night school for 10 years to college to uh, receive a college degree, bachelor's degree in construction and surveying all during my Rubbermaid term. I had an opportunity with Rubbermaid to live all over the United States and manage multi-million startup plants uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I also lived in Texas, New York, and had fabulous experience growing there. Once Rubbermaid was sold, I had an opportunity to work for a fabulous family, the Bueller family, and currently I'm Vice President for Construction and Maintenance for all the Bueller properties, uh, 24 Ace Hardwares, and the 13 grocery stores. I manage anything from uh, a roof leak, a parking lot hole, to a leaky toilet as well as major construction projects for Bueller's. Since I've been there since 99, uh, we have opened five stores that were under me for the construction portion. I have a $4.4 million budget every year for just maintenance of Bueller's, and I have to be fiscally responsible and make sure that I fall within the guidelines of the Bueller family uh, finances and so that we can be profitable and make money. I like volunteerism. I've served on a lot of boards, uh, humane, or excuse me, um, Worcester Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, Steps in Every Woman's House, and 
Every time he puts those papers up, it just throws me off. So, okay. So anyways, thank you very much. I'm excited about being this. I'm not a politician. I'm here for a change and to make a change. And I hope you uh, learn a little bit more about me tonight. Yes, I'd like to reiterate a thank you to everyone for coming out this evening and spending with us and also to the Daily Record and the college for hosting the event. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, I am Bob Graber and uh, I'm applying for a job at Wayne County Commissioner and the Wayne County residents are going to be the people that decide who fills that job. A um, little bit about me, my name has been widely advertised over 30 years for being in the auctioneer business and advertising is a huge part of what we do so a lot of people know that name uh, as far as myself. Um, after I graduated from Oracle High School, I went to Ohio State one year and decided that I didn't think I was going to be able to pursue the vet uh, career that I wanted. So after I stayed home and was working on my uh, brother-in-law's dairy farm, I always had in the back of my head the auctioneering business. I went in the auctioneering business, I met with Steve Andrews, and uh, we have been friends and uh, business associates for 30 years and worked back and forth ever since then. Um, I met my wife Amy uh, shortly after that. And when we were married, we decided that if we could have a farm to raise our children on, we would want to have a farm. She's from a dairy farm in Stark County. So the opportunity came along where we bought our Bachman Township farm, and we started raising Holstein heifers for John Lewis, Douglas, Catawbadale, Bristol Farm, that was Ohio's largest dairy farm. That's escalated into managing their entire heifer operation. There's 4,100 head of cattle and 44 growers. It's over $3 million budget. And between my wife and I and a few others, we handle that and keep those people satisfied. Um, and that is what is at our farm, is Holstein Heifers. And along the way, in the back of my head, and also my Grandpa Graber, I never met. He died before I was born, and he was a township trustee, and I had that uh, kind of something that I wanted to do was to be in his honor. So I ran for Buckland Township as a trustee. I got my elected officials experience there, worked with Carolyn Barrow on budgets, worked with a board. Uh, these positions, this one county commissioner is going to be working with the board, so that is important to realize. Uh, that the teamwork effort, that working with the board is very important. So I appreciate uh, your time this evening listening to uh, answering questions. Okay, thank you. Um, the first three questions uh, will deal with uh, city-county relationships. A common theme among many readers was the tensions between particularly the city of Worcester and Wayne County, several referring to it as a classic us versus them attitude. And this one goes to uh, Bob first. Okay. No one issue uh, perhaps represents this schism more than the departure of the city of Worcester from the Wayne County 911 Emergency Dispatch Center to create a new Warcog dispatch with the city of Ashland and Orville. Reporting by the Daily Record showed the split between the city and county and the resulting duplication of services cost Wayne County taxpayers nearly a half million dollars more for emergency dispatching services in WorkHog's first year of operation. There's been plenty of finger pointing toward which parties were at fault. As a commissioner, would you be willing to objectively evaluate service and technology available in each dispatch center to determine which one would best serve all the residents of Wayne County, and then work with WorkHog to eliminate this costly duplication of services, even if it means the closure of the county dispatch. Let me first start off addressing this as saying uh, the elected officials that sat down and talked about combining dispatch services, in my mind, need complimented for doing that. That's a small miracle in itself. You have representatives from Ashland, Worcester, Orville, and the Sheriff's Department and Wayne County Commissioners. So with those people sitting down to look at this situation over time, that, that, that is a plus from us as constituents to our elected officials. Uh, it's my understanding, um, let, let me say this as well, as a commissioner, yes, we would sit down at any time and discuss and look at things that we're involved with. Um, right now, we have work all and dispatch at 8500, and now that Rickman's in with 8500, we have two dispatch services, basically. And before, uh, we had three. We had uh, 8500, Rickman was operating, and Orville was operating. So as far as physical dispatch services, it isn't a huge amount of difference as far as that part goes. I understand uh, from doing some research that as the entities look at proceeding with War Call, uh, War Call, COG is Council of Governments, and there are statutes 
and uh, certain laws that council of governments have to oblige by. Now, I am told or informed or educated with saying that the current county commissioners at that time uh, found that the council of governments were not in the best favor of the constituents of Wayne County, those being represented by 8,500. So um, at that point, they decided to keep evaluating things and the others went on. So sometimes, you know, the, the he said, she said thing needs to go away. Uh, work all was created and the county commissioners stayed with 8,500. The people that are being serviced by 8,500 seem to be very satisfied with the service. Looking at it going forward, would I be willing to do that? Yes, it would be with the Board of County Commissioners. No one person is going to change the work vote. That's not a possibility. These entities work as boards. I agree with Bob that it needs to start with communication. And um, I think it's unfortunate the way that it's split. And um, it, it happens to be a very efficient way to do for Orville and um, for Worcester. And 8500, uh, in my opinion, should still be the leading dispatch service. And as a county commissioner, I would support the 8500 and try to work for communications to get the teams back together to decide what they should do to move forward. I do think it's broken right now as far as the communication things, and I'd like to see us sit down as committee members, as team leaders, as government leaders, as county leaders, and try to come up with a situation that could save both uh, or every community in Wayne County some money and still provide fair dispatch services to everyone. Bob, anything to add to that? I think that as elected officials, just a particular comment too, is that people really have to realize who they're representing and get past this person did that, or this person said that, or this person's that. They really have to keep remembering that they are representing the constituents that they represent. If the elected officials feel that that is best for Worcester, then so be it. If the county officials think that that is best for the county, then so be it. If there can be some resolve, uh, okay. But, you know, there's another person involved with this, with 8500, and that's our sheriff. And I think he's been involved with the conversation through the commissioners, and he's in favor of 8500 as well. So. Doors are always open. Everybody that knows me would know that I would sit down and talk about anything at any point in time. Should you get the bell again? How yeah. does this work? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Right. So did I understand you both that you would uh, be in favor of closing the county dispatch? I am not in favor of closing the county dispatch. I think we need to work together as a team to see if we can bring it back together. And if it can't come back together, that we work as a unified county so that everyone can get the best service that they need for safety services. Do I answer that? Yeah. Uh, yes, I would not be in favor of closing 8500. And I think that as people dig into this and know more knowledge, there are some technical things that with our fire uh, signals that I'm not sure if all of our departments that are represented at 8500 can be dispatched at Orthog. So there's a lot, there's lots of things technically that are involved in this that, that needs worked out as well too. So um, with our space at the Justice Center and 8500 functioning, uh, I think that that should be our focus as county commissioners. Okay, thanks. Are you first now? Mm -hmm. Okay, this one uh, Becky gets the first crack at. Megan Durback asks, Worcester residents make up nearly a quarter of the county's population pay county taxes like all county citizens, and over 55% of the sales tax is generated in Worcester. Yet the county does not fund any road projects in the city limits, nor its 911, nor other services. Why is this allowed and how can it be fixed? Well, um, yes, Worcester is 55% is and uh, Orville is a city and Rittman is a city. And I think that would have to be true for um, every village and city in the county and how the money gets distributed. Um, I do think that just like townships, they're responsible for their own roadways. The county is responsible for their own roadways as well as the cities do. So um, other than trying to heal the relationships between cities and counties and uh, trying to work together as a team, I think that the county is doing what it should do for uh, dividing up the tax money equally for road services. 
Up. Okay, so your question is that the Worcester taxes that are being paid are the majority and Worcester City is not receiving benefit from those? Is that correct? Well, I, I think it, I mean, I think what the, her point is here is that their services such as, you know, 911, that they're, you know, that they're basically paying double for. Okay, well, in regards to taxes, you know, it depends if she's talking about property tax or sales tax or both or some of which, um, you know, our property tax is just a portion of our general fund, a very small portion. The biggest portion is sales tax of the general fund. Uh, and if they're coming to Worcester to buy their goods and things, they may be people from the county doing that just because it flows through Worcester. Uh, may not necessarily mean that it was a person in Worcester itself. Um, so taxes in general, uh, until you understand the whole, where they all come from for the general fund, it may not be fair to make that assessment, I guess. Um, you know, people in Worcester pay taxes to Worcester. Uh, we pay taxes too in the county. Uh, I'm from the county. I'm serviced by the county engineer's office and the sheriff's department. Um, I'm not serviced by the police department of Worcester. So, you know, there are specific things about the sheriff's department that I'd like to see uh, improved. We have two, two cruisers on, two cruisers to cover the whole county. Third to Buckman Township, to all the townships. Um, how is that uh, good, good for Wayne County to only have two cruisers on the road? I think that each village, township, and city in the county is its own governing system. And obviously Worcester, Orville, uh, decided that WorkHog was the best choice for them and the best operating expenses for them for dispatch services. Uh, again, I think it's unfortunate that we can't get them back together, but as far as the tax dollars, like for example, I live in the county also, I don't live in Worcester City, but I do pay Worcester City taxes because I work inside the city. So. Um, it depends on uh, how the taxes are divided up, and to be honest with you, I don't have the knowledge or experience of how that exact budget is broke down, and it's something that I definitely would want to be interested in and learn more about. But city taxes, village taxes, everybody pays their own taxes, but I do think the county is doing a good job as far as distributing the money to uh, road repairs and facilities repairs in the county. Okay. Just quickly on road repairs, the engineer's office has its own budget. Uh, it doesn't necessarily come from local taxes and things. It comes from gas tax, there are several things. I don't have all of them listed, I've been studying it, don't have them all memorized. But the engineer's office and the road repair that they do in the county isn't necessarily from tax funds directly generated in uh, like sales tax and property tax. Most of it I think is from gas tax. So uh, until you understand the in-depthness of the engineer's office, and where their funding comes from, uh, it's not fair to comment on some of that. Okay. Oh, can I? Sure. Okay. County roads are, um, the money comes from the state, and it is from gasoline tax and license plate tax. And so it isn't, it does run through the county budget, but it, the money that we have to repair county roads is mandated and comes down from the state, and that is a certain portion that we get every year. And um, this year the roads are being uh, evaluated by an independent uh, company to take the uh, personalism out of what roads should be fixed first and they will be getting a report stating uh, the priorities and where the money should be spent that we get from the state in Wayne County. Okay, let's move on. This one goes to uh, uh, Bob first. Several readers. Uh, raised questions about the county's decision about five years ago to withdraw from the joint arrangement with the city and the Wayne County Humane Society and build its own dog shelter. Uh, David uh, Silvestri asked, do you know how much money our county spends on the dog show or shelter and how much revenue it generates for the county and how are these values compared to what the county used to pay when the Humane Society or used to pay the Humane Society for the same services? Um, I've only had a little bit of time to research some of that. I, as a constituent of Wayne County uh, and reading the papers and doing uh, those general things, have watched and read the transition from where we are to our own, uh, owning our own dog shelter. Um, so as far as specifics on dollars, um, 
do not, I'm not able to comment specifically. Uh, I attended the Bark Ball this uh, last winter and visited with uh, some of the volunteers and the director there. Um, I would say that the euthanization rate is less at this point in time than it's ever been. I think the number was approaching 200 volunteers that help at our facility now. Uh, the control of the facility since the county owns it is important. It's hard to measure the dollar figure of what that really means, um, but to not be dictated by another entity or have negotiation problems with another entity, if you own the, the dog shelter uh, you, and are in control of it, that is a huge plus to what the commissioners thought at the time. So I don't have specific dollars. There is rumors that you know it's more expensive now. Uh, but I think having it brought into county ownership and control is important uh, so that those things are under our jurisdiction and we can make the decisions that we need. I think the services, uh, I deal with Orville Vet Clinic, and I know they're one of the vet clinics that help do a lot of the dog retrieving and things. I know that uh, from their standpoint, there's a lot more of that type uh, specific health care being given more now than before. So I had a little bit of time, but not a lot of specifics. Um, I, I think it's difficult to weigh the ownership and control of the whole building and system. Uh, back when the Humane Society and the county split, there were two different things you have to look at. You have to look at the, um, the dog shelter and the dog warden. And back when the Humane Society was doing it, the county was um, so uh, the county was hiring and services from the Humane Society. And when there was vicious dogs and other things that needed to be attended to, they were sending the uh, Humane Society uh, dog warden to into situations that were not safe for them. And that's one of the reasons why it started and split. Um, the, it is important that we have safety services available for when there's vicious dogs to be collected. But one thing that I, I don't agree with is I don't agree with the county purchasing a separate facility. And I think that we could save money if we could get back to the Humane Society and uh, let the county budget and work with the Humane Society and get rid of the facility out on uh, Route 83. There was a second part to that question. I kind of skipped over but so why don't we I'll direct this to uh, Bob first and then Becky can answer. Mickey to, and it kind of follows up on what the, the, both of you uh, were just talking about. Mickey DiCarlo, a Humane Society board member asked, there's been a great deal of discussion in the press and social media about Wayne County not having a humane agent that deals with more than just you know dog problems. If elected, would you be willing to uh, open to collaborating with local organizations and entities about a countywide task force enabling this position to be recreated and providing some level of funding? Uh, again, I'm always open to conversation, and I would assume that the county commissioners as a board would want to do that. Uh, that's not a specific decision, actually. We work, would work as a board as entities do. Um, that position. There, there would be so many things that go into it. Uh, you know, funding it, is it specifically going to be from uh, county, uh, the county commissioner's budget? Uh, you know, this, a huge amount of things would go into that. Um, I guess I differ from Becky a little bit. Uh, in answer to the other question, I think it's very important that now that we own our own facility, that that is something that we keep and maintain. That way we can assure uh, the victims of the dogs uh, that down the road that we have facilities to take care of them and do the right thing in that regard. Is there a cost to that? Yes. Uh, was there a cost to the other? Yes. This having ownership and control of it eliminates a lot of issues down the road as far as negotiations in my opinion. So I think that was a plus. And those are dollars spent. I wouldn't back up. I wouldn't go backwards on that. Um, I agree that we should have a, a humane agent for the county and have the proper um, safety requirements. But again, I don't agree with the facility out on Route 83. I think it was tax, county tax dollars that we did not need to spend if we could have worked out an agreement. And here again, I think it goes back to communications. And like for example, right, um, dog pound and dog warden collects dogs in the county. But I live in the county. I don't live in the city. I have a stray cat. Humane Society can't take my cat. 
What do I do with the cat? I dump it off at a farm? No. So I don't think we're getting proper services uh, for the county for dogs, cats, and, and other uh, animals that are in distress around the county. I think we need to look at it as a humane society and try to get the county to work back together and um, hire the agents either jointly, but I'd like to see that facility sold out on Route 83 and put the money back into the taxpayers to use for other entities. Okay, let's uh, move on to land use and agricultural issues. Uh, land, land use issues and the impacts they have on local agriculture was on the minds of several readers. Uh, the Daily Records uh, series earlier this week, Unlocking Worcester, pointed out that many city leaders are concerned with the negative consequences of the uh, tight local housing market and the lack of availability of land for additional new housing. <coughs> Urban Sprawl's impact on agriculture was a hot topic at your recent uh, Farm Bureau debate. So along those lines, Gene and Amy Nussbaum pointed out that Wayne County has long been ranked number one in the state in terms of the number of dairy farms, but cheap out-of-state milk is depressing prices back to 1980, pri 1980 prices while operating costs uh, rise considerably. They state, many farmers are being left with no, al no alternative but to sell their land to developers because farming is no longer feasible. Once that happens, you can't reclaim the land for agriculture purposes. If our ag agriculture continues to decline, what will happen to the county's economy or even our much beloved Wayne County Fair? What steps will you take as a county commissioner to protect the family dairy farmers of your county? I grew up in Wayne County and this is an agricultural county and I do know that we are the largest dairy producer in the state, the ca Wayne County is. And um, I have no agricultural background, but I understand the principles of business and every dairy farm, every farm that uh, it is a business. And it is unfortunate that the um, um, pricing right now is so low and that the dairy farmers don't have an opportunity to actually make any money and survive. I also can see how second and third generation farmers, it would be harder and harder to keep the kids on the farm and maintain. A lot of people, yes, I'm sure that economically you have to look at other ways, sell off land that gets developed into housing and that's one of the things that in the county that we need to look at when, when development along county roads becomes T lots for residential and it stretches out. But as far as being a farmer, uh, I can't state other than the fact that it is a business and you have to maintain your business. And I do feel really bad that uh, the prices are so low. It's very unfortunate that Daisy um, does not buy local milk. And uh, that is something that is very hard for me to understand. I did ask WEDC about that and said that they did not have an opportunity to write in the contract for the tax abatement that Daisy was mandated to buy local milk. I am hoping as Daisy increases and adds lines that they will look more at local milk and buy local milk to help the, the local dairies. Uh, as I mentioned at the Farm Bureau, if I could do anything uh, with commodities for farmers, we would. And uh, that's out of county commissioner's control. Um, and growing up through the families of dairy farmers and owning a farm myself, uh, very, very, very knowledgeable about that, that situation. Uh, the world market is such a big player in uh, commodities now, and with our uh, President Trump working on things, uh, that's very, very important that we keep exporting. We're exporting as much dairy product and swine product pork as we ever have, uh, so things could be a lot worse. I would uh, say to Mr. Newsman one thing, and he knows this is 30 seconds, right? Uh, he would know this as well. Um, for being in the uh, auction real estate business, when uh, when things are going good for agriculture, they are not selling their ground to, for residential development. And when it's not going good, they're not selling it either. I read the farm economy lately, the farms that are being bought are being bought by agricultural people. Uh, and they're not being sold to development. The, the ag price right now is higher than, a, than uh, developers want to pay. If you go back through and do a study of the farms that all sold, most of them are going to farmers in the last five years. I think too that um, 
the agricultural land is very valuable and we need to maintain it and urban sprawl is definitely a concern. That's why for economic development in the county, we need to look at keeping it within the city limits, try not to expand the city limits, and we have land there to develop in cities and villages and not allow urban sprawl to take away our, our agricultural acres. I would not be in favor of eliminating any more agricultural acres than we have today. It is who we are, it's where we grew up, it's what Wayne County is known for. I would just add, uh, reiterate the same thing. Infrastructures are where the cities are, so it's important that we work with the infrastructures that are already there. That's one reason why um, developers are not looking at agricultural ground, because it costs too much to put infrastructure away from cities where it already is. So we need to utilize that ground where the infrastructure is to the best ability um, and, and make those lots so that they can be as close to infrastructure without going out, uh, because as some of my auctioneer friends always say, the land factory has shut off. There is no more land. It will not be uh, made again. So it is a very valuable source that uh, we should not take lightly. Okay. Bob, this one's for you. Don Noble of Shreve asks another land use question. How do you view the development of abandoned rail quarters into public non-motorized paths by rails to trails in Wayne County? And then why is this your position? Well, uh, from the background of owning a farm and uh, having ground itself being near and dear, there's something about farmers that their their property is dear to them as, uh, as uh, about next in line to their family. Um, many of the ra rails and trails and bike paths have been uh, developed on existing railroad beds. And actually, if that railroad bed came off of a piece of ground that was your farm, and if it dissected or cornered or triangled some of your ground, uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of the farmers, if they have an opportunity to have that land back, that would be their preference. Now, as I said to Farm Bureau, rails to trails, uh, the trails that are developed and when they're in place, uh, the people that use those, we've used them, uh, our family, and the times that are spent on those become very precious times with families and memories. Nothing taken away from that. Um, it seems as though most of the trails uh, become the railroads get the railroads bought instead of going back to property owners. So that doesn't, for some reason, doesn't seem to happen. We don't, the farmers do not seem to get those trail beds back. The biggest thing I would say with those, and from working with, we've worked with, as Balkan Township has, we've worked with rails to trails. The communication at times between the two entities, and I'm not going into specifics, uh, but it's like communication with a lot of things. Uh, there could be give and take when there isn't, and sometimes people on one side do not see things agriculturally and uh, they'll put things in a trail that if they could do it over here may be more beneficial and when you bring those things up uh, it, you sometimes don't get even a response that let's negotiate or something like that. So I, I think that if there would be a little better communication on some times when the trails are going in it would be uh, you know, a, a more pleasant experience getting the trail started. I think they're a good thing and people share on them and, and experience a lot of good, but I'm sure that if you ask farmers first that they could have those railroad beds back, uh, they would. And there's never uh, not another source of doing something in my opinion. I am in favor of everything about rails to trails. I think that it is uh, about healthy living, it's about it's saving the environment. It is about doing things as a family. It's about bringing economic development into our communities. People from outside the communities share those trails. Um, I do not see any detriment to having rails to trails in Wayne County. I know currently they're working on the Heartland Trail, which is going to connect Orville to uh, Maslin. And rails to trails is a nonprofit, uh, so they're not taking any tax dollars. And I think that it's very important that we support them. They're bringing money into our community, and it allows families to grow in a healthy, environmental way, and to witness and see backlands, farmlands that we would never see if you weren't on the trails. The kind of people that are riding on the trails are not the type that are going to do vandalism or um, litter. Uh, they are people that are here to enjoy the outdoors and experience Wayne County. I would just say uh, 
in any change that you do, um, like when you bring bicyclists through a new area, uh, you know, there are other ramifications. I mean, most of those people are good people, but there will be an instance when it isn't. There will be a, a health issue at some point in time. So first responders uh, have to become familiar with trails. They have to have equipment for trails. Uh, there's a lot more to trails than just riding bikes or the equestrian thing. And, and yes, I've always said that those times are great when you're out there. Uh, but with the agricultural, the level that we have right now through the county, uh, we're working a lot of times with large farms that are EPA mandated. It brings in a new scope of like their chemicals and their fertility, how close they can or can't be to the trail. Uh, there's, there's a huge amount of new things that go into the trails than what used to be. Uh, our, and part of that is because our farm agriculture is changing. So uh, I think there's just a lot more discussion needed in these when these trails come uh, in regards to those things. I think that um, using the railroad beds for rails to trails has a positive impact on our county and also on the farmers. I do know that the negotiations over in Boffman Township, they worked it out with the farmer where he could have a um, driveway along the rails to trails to help for his agricultural equipment. And I think again, it's opening the discussions that have never happened before between these two entities because this is a new experience. But the rails to trails um, is going all the way from Cincinnati uh, to Erie and uh, I'm excited that Wayne County can be a big part of it and have three individual trails that can hopefully can connect up on that entire route. Okay. The, Becky, this one's yours first. On another uh, land topic, Paul Steller asked, as a lifelong resident of Wayne County and Canaan Township, and considering the current dissatisfaction with the way that Buckeye Biogas LLC's uh, proposal to build a 10 million, gallon, 10 million gallon storage lagoon in Canaan Township has been handled, what would you do as a Wayne County Commissioner to protect the environment and land values of Wayne County residents from such detrimental uses? Well, as a county commissioner, the county commissioners have no um, authority over the lagoon that is being proposed in Canaan Township. Um, the EPA, it is, between, it is a private uh, business agreement between Quasar, the property owners, and they have to file uh, and receive proper EPA, EPA permits. The only thing as county commissioners we could do is make sure that we value uh, and get written into the EPA permits that the roadways, the county roadways, will be maintained to the level that they are now. It is a big concern. And um, I used to live out in that area north of, uh, north of Madisonburg. And uh, as a, the, my biggest concern as a county commissioner would be prop, people's property values. I do feel sorry for them for that as also, also the um, odors that will be created from the pond. But this pond, um, if it is done properly and followed all the EPA permitting regulations, uh, it will be uh, filtered and uh, the materials are supposed to be 20% uh, human waste. And that is where part of the unknowing is. Uh, again, as a county commissioner, we can't do anything about that. It's just like every farmer who has their own lagoon. It's just that they are taking and maintaining their, all, their own sewage on their own properties. And this is an, a lagoon that will be bringing in uh, sewage from other areas and it is the unknown. I do have a, a lot of respect for the people that are fighting hard to learn. They've hired their own um, EPA attorney to represent them so that they do get the facts. And uh, I think it'll be a battle to the end. But again, as a county commissioner, I really would not have any involvement in that except for protecting our roadways. Yeah, some of what I'm going to say is the sim same and similar as a Wayne County Commissioner. Uh, that's not under their jurisdiction. Um, that's an agricultural area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that lagoon and Quasar's uh, contract is directly under the supervision of Ohio EPA. If they meet those guidelines, uh, that contract is supervised by them. You can talk with Ohio EPA and get their standards and their testing and, 
I'm sure that they're going to scrutinize this particular area much more than other areas. I am very, um, you know, that goes quick. <laughs> uh, very appreciative of the residents in that area that they are uh, willing to have concerns and get together and talk about this. Uh, you know, in our area, we have a call in uh, the Island Lagoon, and there are times that they're pumping two miles away and you never even realize it. I realize that's uh, cow uh, liquid manure and not from the Quasar plant. Uh, but in, it boils down to that as county commissioner, we have no jurisdiction. And in that township, the other thing is that it's not zoned. So there is no zoning that comes into play there in this in regards to that lagoon. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to switch over to kind of ex uh, questions about experience. Uh, perhaps the most asked questions dealt with what experience the candidates would bring to the job of uh, county commissioner. Um, several, reader, several readers specifically mentioned the Justice Center renovation project. Uh, with the city police department's departure plan, or with the city police departure, department's departure, plans are being developed to renovate the 1970s building to expand the jail to meet current mandates and possibly move other county services into the facility. Jen Chory wants to know what qualities do each of the candidates bring to the table to ensure fiscal responsibility and overall understanding of a construction project? Specific to that project, um, Wayne County Engine, uh, Wayne County Commissioners have hired a consultant firm already to look at a uh, feasibility study of what is needed with the Justice Center. As we all know, it's 40 years old. Uh, we are overcrowded. We are housing 10 to 15 or 10 to 17 uh, residents out of county at a cost to us. Uh, the building itself um, has become in a deteriorated state in certain areas that uh, that it is actually has some potential hazardous risk to the people that are working there. Um, I do not have an engineer's degree. I have uh, designed all the buildings at my farm and, and uh, we went through construction at Bachman Township. Uh, quite frankly, um, leaders and, and people that hire people to construct their buildings hire engineers and architects to do these things. Uh, common sense uh, overview and, and, and review of those things sometimes is just as good as what some architects put together. I know in our building we mandated certain things that wouldn't have been put in by the architect uh, with natural lighting and things like that, and we made it happen when they wouldn't have not made that happen. So, um, as far as degrees, sometimes uh, I'm not sure if that is as uh, goes as far as what common sense does. Uh, this will be probably the biggest uh, project that Wayne County has seen, maybe, uh, maybe ever, as far as the, maybe since the Justice Center was built 40 years ago because uh, this will be a major, major uh, project for the county. I also agree that I'm very proud that the uh, county commissioners have hired an independent consultant to review the existing jail facility and now that there is some space available to give us options as what we could do to house the prisoners. My son is actually a Wayne County um, jailer. He's a corrections officer. So maybe I know a little bit too much about what's going on inside, but the facility is just um, needs renovated or needs tore down. Uh, it, we do not have proper safety for some of our, <laughs> there That's we go quick. again. That's quick. Okay. But anyways, I have a construction engineering degree. I've, for 30 years, I've managed construction projects, multi-million dollar startups at, at Rubbermaid and Bueller's. And I believe that your buildings and your construction is only as good as your prints are. And I think I will be able to oversee the prints and add value to the construction of a new jail facility, whatever they decide would be the proper location and uh, the proper configuration for that. I just feel I'm the best qualified person for all the county businesses and all the county facilities to oversee the construction and maintenance on them. Okay, this is where we depart from the, the uh, normal uh, format a bit. Um, we've got different questions for each of the candidates. Um, 
There will not be a time for rebuttal, but we'll allow you each three minutes. Remember that, Dan. <laughs> three minutes for responses if you, if you so desire. Uh, and let's see, it goes to Becky first. Okay. Correct. Uh, okay, uh, Becky, unlike your opponent, you have no record as a public official to run on or defend. Um, our readers wanted to know what experiences you bring to the table in your approach to a first stint as a public official handling multi-million dollar budgets um, that will make you the best choice for the office. As Charlie Hardman put it, one question I have is based on the campaign statement that they will shake things up and make changes. And, uh, several. Uh, mentioned that apparently from your Farm Bureau uh, appearance. What will those changes be and how will they accomplish and how will you accomplish it while working with limited budgets, keeping in mind that you would be one of three county commissioners that make decisions? Well, every project has a budget and every project has to be maintained to be within the budget or it's not a successful project. Um, I am not a politician. I have never been a politician, but I don't believe you have to have political background to do the job as a county commissioner. It is a job. It's a very big job. I think that you need to be able to work as a team, and I'm looking forward to working with the other two county commissioners so that we can decide what would be best for the county, how the money could best be distributed. I know that um, there is more money and uh, financial lines on the budget that I have any no idea what they are at this point and I am willing to dig in and do that but I really think my private sector and my engineering background and managing projects and uh, managing budgets staying within budgets and guidelines and being fiscally responsible I also serve many things in the county as a volunteer like I said I served on the Red Cross board the Chamber of Commerce board Main Street Worcester I served on Steps in Every Woman's House. I have been on the Engineering Advisory Board at um, the Wayne County Schools Career Center for 30 years, and I'm on the board for the Friends of the Wayne County Fair. I have been out there uh, working for Quota for the last 20 years, and Quota is a nonprofit that raises money for hearing and speech impairment to help people through the community. I feel that I know the county as well as uh, any other candidate that could step into the position. Uh, nobody knows how to be a county commissioner. And I think it's something that we need to dig in and open up. I do not have set agendas, and I think it's time to look into what's going on and make some changes. Okay. And uh, this one's for Bob. Uh, Bob, you have a record as a public official serving eight years as a Bachman Township trustee. Several readers had questions about your service in that role. So there really are two questions here. Um, Rick Ramsdell of Orville had one asking, during your term as a Bachman Township trustee, the Bachman Township General Fund went from 3.2 million in 2010 to 1.2 million uh, in January of 2018, a reduction of 63%, yet you are running as a fiscal conservative. Based on these numbers, why should voters think that you are a fiscal conservative? And the other part of the question is, several readers ask about your role in the creation of the controversial East Wayne Fire District, which Bachman Township just announced that it was withdrawing from. What was your involvement in its creation and what are your thoughts on the current situation? You want two questions in three minutes? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Three minutes per question. Those are two different topics. Well, we might fudge a bit. Well, those are two entirely different topics. I'm glad to address all of them. Uh, our dollars in Bachman Township, if you're familiar with Bachman Township, our general fund become the size that it was and is because of large estate tax settlements from three different persons uh, previous to me being a township trustee. Bachman Township, as every township, you're Dollars are audited by the County Budget Commission. It makes it, that is made up of the treasurer and the prosecutor. Every year, your numbers are looked at and approved. When you have money that came in in those sums, uh, and you don't have, you still have gravel roads, you don't have buildings that are up to code, you have equipment that is worn out, uh, we did capital improvement projects. 
capital improvement projects. We put in Hubert Road, it was a road they couldn't even turn an ambulance around on. We replaced the bridge with the county. Um, we re our maintenance building had a bathroom in that wouldn't pass code. We couldn't turn around in the maintenance building. We added on to the maintenance building, put a new roof on. Uh, there was a year's supply of salt, salt, road salt, bought and paid for when I left office. Uh, there's a year's worth of gravel bought and paid for. We had a chance to buy grindings at a discounted price when they ground Route 30. We bought $85,000 worth of grindings. The whole time we were doing this, Bachman Township at this point in time is the only township in Wayne County that does not have a fire levy to provide fire and EMS. We were paying our fire contracts out of the general fund. That is unheard of. I didn't work. There's 16 townships. We're the only township to this date that does not have a fire levy to provide fire protection. We're paying for that out of the general fund. During that point in time, revenue sources changed. The estate tax was taken away, um, and that varied from millions to uh, one year we had 185,000 in revenue from just estate tax. The next year was 700, but in 2013 that went away totally. We maintained the service, and our services ran between 600 and 650 thousand dollars. And yes, our revenue without any uh, fire levy, our revenue is around 400 thousand. Were we spending 200 and some thousand to provide the service we were? Yes. Did we get rid of all the gravel roads in our township? Yes. Did we redo the maintenance building so it is long-term efficient? It, uh, we used, uh, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of lighting and uh, a maintenance building that lasts a long, long time. The equipment's upgraded. The roads are in excellent shape. So a lot of our funds uh, went into capital improvements in the township. And then when our revenue changed, we continued to provide the same level of service and yes, we went from 3.1 to 1.1, but at 1.1, there are many townships that don't have that. That is the reason that at one point in time, the trustees that were in place looked at the situation of the funding and saw that it was going down. When you're paying your fire contracts out of the general fund and everybody else has a levy, that needs looked at, or it's going to continue to go down. And that is one reason that we talked about approaching um, the situation of the fire district. We had two. Bachman Township has no fire department itself. We contract with four departments. Marsh did, Marshville, Orville, North Orange, Dalton. Two of those departments, Dalton and Marshville, were coming to us for years uh, and saying that they were having problems staffing. So our goal, and the goal still is, to provide a service to our constituents of a staff station with a medic. If there's anybody that doesn't think that a staff station and a medic is superior to volunteers, look around the county. All the departments, or the majority of the departments, the majority of the departments, let's put it that way, are trying to go to a staff station, and if they can provide a medic, that they are trying to do that. So as we saw the need for eliminating our fire contracts out of our general fund, and a need to try and go to staffing, and a need to work with others, since Dalton and Marshville were two of our fire departments, the district idea was there. Central Fire District, anybody from Smithville, would applaud their fire district. We met with Central, we researched them, the fiscal officer gave us their books. We learned how they worked. There are two townships, a few towns. We wanted to be very similar to Central. They run this way, we were going to run that way. We needed to be, the rules at that point in time with the former fire district, we needed to be geographically contiguous. The township of Sugar Creek lies north of Dalton. And Dalton services in the northern part of Sugar Creek Township. And the trustees at the time, and some people, you know, say this is Bob Graver that did this. Okay, there are four entities. There are two sets of trustees, there are two village councils, and two sets of mayors that all were involved in doing this. So this wasn't one person, it never is when you're on board. These are board decisions to create East Wayne Fire District. East Wayne Fire District was created, we took Sure Creek in, the trustees were in favor at that time, that gave us the geographical link, basically the Steer Route 94 corridor. Um, a lot of people had a misconception when the levy, the entity needed created. The entity needed created for that to put the levy on the ballot to ask for the funds. A lot of people thought by voting no for the first levy, they were voting no for East Wayne Fire District. And that is not the case. We as a board, and each entity that was there had legal representation. And as they created the documents, they said, you're going to need more than one try at this. You're in a township that's never had a fire levy. That's going to be difficult to do. So we knew right away it was going to have to go to. We went for the Cadillac. The only thing in foresight that I would say maybe that I would suggest we did better when Central started, they started at two mills and went up. We started for a staffing level of 3.8. Once it ran for a while, we got a safer grant, 
648000 We staffed the station with one and ran for two years, full staff, medic on each staff, out the door in 45 seconds. It was tremendous. We saw what the revenue came in. We dropped it three mills. It still didn't pass. Sure Creek is pulled out now. The future of the district is up in the air, quite frankly. Um, they think that they're going to contract with departments, but if there's departments there that don't have anybody to run the equipment, I'm not sure who's going to be there to service us. The goal was to make better staff stations, and if we could go to the route of having medic there, we're out in the eastern part of the county. We need services to take care of people when they're having problems. I get a laughter, or was that three minutes? Uh, oh, we gave you a semester. Three minutes. Okay. It was three minutes for each question. Was it? Okay, minutes. thank you. So, okay, well, thank you. Uh, this one's for, uh, no, this one's for you, Bob. Yep. Okay, Don Kosher of Marshallville wants to know, with the revamping of the federal tax laws, which the business community has touted as very beneficial to business investment, profits, and job creation, and with the nearly full employment in Wayne County, do you think it is appropriate that local businesses continue to ask our county, schools, and city administrations for subsidies such as tax abatements? Um, tax abatements, um, I mentioned this, I think, at the Farm Bureau event too. Um, it's very critical how those contracts are written. Um, naturally, since the county commissioners through a general fund, has both property tax and several other areas and sales tax in there. Wayne County has been very, very fortunate to thrive as well as we have. And it, it, and it starts, I think, personally, from its agricultural background. Uh, you know, we have 355 or 56,000 acres. 277,000 of those acres are agriculture. So those agriculture products are spawning a, a large part of our industry and manufacturing and jobs. So when people come to this area to live, to work at places like Daisy Smith, Dairy, Gerber, Poultry, you know, and, 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 and others as well. You know, they're creating tax dollars for us from their property tax, but also from when they go out and purchase things. Um, and if we can attract more businesses in, that's always a good thing, because if the community has residents, they're thriving, they're living here, they're working here, they're going to school here, they're going to church here, all those things. A community that thrives needs people in. Um, about tax abatements, you know, I think that they really need to be careful that, that the back end of them, when, it, when and if someone leaves, and we've seen this with different uh, industries, um, have a scapegoat that they don't ante up, so to speak. So I think the back end is as much as important as anything. I would like to think that maybe that we would enhance what we have as far as growth with uh, the industries and the factories that are here as much as what we do invite more in. I think the established uh, manufacturing and industries that are here uh, that have people working there are just as important as bringing people in or facilities in. Or is that, is that specific or not? Yeah, that's specific. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm sorry. It's your turn now. That's a both? That's a general. <coughs> that's for both of you. Okay. Oh, well, you didn't tell us that. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, again, tax abatement, I think it has its place in uh, both the city and county governments, and I think it's important that we continue to look at economic development within our facilities and city limits, and again, not, not allow urban sprawl to take away our uh, agricultural acres. Um, I definitely want to see the county to grow. I was very disappointed that recently we had a decline of population in Wayne County, and that's very disheartening. And uh, again, we need good businesses to try to maintain the population so that we can support all of the entities of the county. Okay, the next question, and the last one, uh, Stuart Mikrans said that since it's likely that most of those present here tonight, um, and this one goes to Becky first, uh, most of the, uh, the people present here tonight are Republicans. He asked, how long have you been a Republican and why are you a Republican? Meanwhile, Elsa Bowen has had a couple questions on thoughts or, uh, on President Trump. And I think the one that we'll include here is, uh, what is your position on President Trump's bilateral trade negotiations and his approach to tariffs? Okay, I have been a lifelong Republican. I registered as a Republican when I was 18 years old. 
and I have supported the Republican Party my entire life. Um, I definitely, I will tell you this is kind of a, an interesting question because I had somebody text me today that said that they wanted to support me but he wanted to know how I felt about President Trump. And I believe that you need to support the President of the United States to do the best decisions that he can right now. I am a Republican. I support Trump. Do I like everything he's doing? No. Do I like the fact that he tweets? No. I don't think that, that um, social media is a proper way to handle business and uh, even for locally, but yet alone the whole United States. Um, as far as the bilateral trade agreement, I think it's something that we definitely have to stand by what he's doing. And, um, and terrorists, I believe that he has done a wonderful job for terrorists and uh, I am worried about the chemical warfare and what they're going to do. And yes, am I frightened about what's going on? Yes, I'm frightened because that could affect the United States and every one of us. But I believe that terrorists need to be dealt with and we should not back down and we should support President Trump. In regards to President Trump, uh, yes, his, the policies that uh, he represents and the changes that he's working on, the promises pretty much, or the things that he said he was going to do, he's carrying on doing. So I respect him in that regard. Um, a lot of times people in elected offices say one thing and do another or don't carry out. Uh, I do wish that his mannerism or his tone or his conversation would be different. I don't respect uh, the tongue that he has at certain times, uh, and it's 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 it's, it's just I'm not, I don't respect that as an elected official. Um, so, but his policies um, are important to the economy, and the one concern I have right now is agriculturally. I hope we get through the NAFTA thing without that being a huge uh, a huge effect on agricultural markets because that is that is very very serious. I'm not saying that NAFTA didn't need looked at, uh, but. That, that could play a big role in our markets. It already did have a role in our markets uh, a little bit when he opened up the negotiations, but he is a very strong person and usually gets what he wants. So I hope he gets better prices for our markets. Do you want, okay. Okay. Um, you want to answer the, the first part of that question about Republicans? No, no, running. Like we, we, Republicans. We're doing well on time. So yeah. we okay. Um, I am always open to all conversation, and uh, for those people that know me, um, know that when I grew up, I pretty much raised myself, so I wasn't in a home that was like, and not that this is any excuse or reason, but uh, I was not brought up in a Republican household. It wasn't uh, something that uh, was even something I, you know, was involved with for a long, long, long time. I did vote Republican for a long time. Um, I will say that there are a lot of elected officials that are Republicans that were not always Republicans. Uh, so if this is a major issue, um, I'm going to apologize, but I will say and always tell the truth, there was a period in time uh, that I was upset with the Republican Party. Uh, my, my biggest uh, in, uh, career is auctioneering and real estate, and that is a, a commission business. And when the economy basically tanked in 2006, 7, and 8, uh, naturally my business took a huge dive there too. And I was disappointed in my Republican Party because I thought that we could do better in avoiding that. I had conversations with people in our office that I was saying, we cannot keep going the way we are. Not that it was going to change anything, not us. Uh, but after things went the way they were, and the people that we had coming up, um, I did not vote Republican at one point in time for one uh, primary. And that has been a big point with some people. That's fine, I respect that. Since then, I voted Republican and uh, have become more interested and involved and appreciate the party more. I did join the executive committee and uh, serve on that at this point. I just want to say one more thing about um, being a Republican and supporting Trump. I, since I have never had a political career before, sometimes I'm taken aback by the questions that people ask me. And I've had, um, I had my picture on Facebook with uh, Eric Trump back when he was in uh, Wayne County at the Wayne County Fair and he was campaigning for his dad. I was very proud to put that picture up on there because I was supporting Trump all the way and still do to that fact. But I have had people
people come up to me and say, I would like to know how you feel about Donald Trump. And you stand there and you think, okay, I know I support Trump, so I'm either going to win a vote or I'm going to lose a vote. So I have had five to one people that have asked me about supporting Trump that said that they would vote for me because I do support the Republican Party and support Donald Trump. I had an interesting conversation today for 13 minutes on the phone with a gentleman that um, I went and met with and he wanted to support me and then he heard that I was in favor of Donald Trump. And um, we, had, we had a discussion on the phone and we talked about uh, what Donald Trump does that's good and what Donald Trump does that's bad, as well as Clinton and Obama. So uh, we just had to agree that we disagree on this subject and um, we will move on. But it is really interesting. I think you either love Donald Trump, you hate him, or you're somewhere in the middle. But I believe you need to support your party and support the president that's in office right now. Okay. Uh, we're at the time for your closing statements, and since we're doing well on time, if you need two minutes, you can have two minutes. So, uh, Bob, you, you go first. That's right. Again, thanks for everyone coming out and uh, sharing the evening with us. Um, you can learn a little bit more about us, and if anybody needs to learn more, I have got time for anybody that I will make time. Um, the job opening, like I said, is there's a job opening in the constituents of uh, Wayne County are going to elect at some point in time a, a, a new commissioner. Actually, we have a Republican primary and then we're going to face uh, that person will face two in the fall uh, as of a week or so ago. Um, I have been promoting that I bring grassroots, common sense, uh, techniques and business and opinions. Those um, ideals and models have taken me from a person with nothing to a person that owns a 100 acre farm line of machinery. I've had a well-respected auctioneer business. I've competed with the major uh, auction firms in the area and have done well in that area under my own name. Uh, when you get into specifics, I, I think I'm doing a negotiation every time I'm selling even a $5 item or a $1.7 million farm. And, and, and that is working with the public. I basically have worked with the public my whole life uh, through the auctioneer business. I get a new client. Every client is new. So that is just a new relationship, and I take care of his funds, like I said, whether it's 5,000, 10,000, or 1.7 million. Uh, I was entrusted with uh, the Airworks auction. I started working with Ruben Troyer uh, on that, and that became a $4 million auction last February with 6,000 buyer numbers, and I, all I did was take care of funds and problems. So I'm used to doing those things because people trust me from my grassroots experience and have respected me. Sure, if there's people who disagree with me, I'm okay with being disagree with. We were in a different society today, and there's going to be people that have different opinions. But I respect them, and I hope they respect me. I think the position of county commissioner, as was mentioned, uh, there is no training for that as far as like a college education. There isn't a county commissioner 101 class that you can take. Uh, it was said here not long ago that one person may be more ready for the job than another, and no learning curve. There will be a learning curve for either one of us. I will trust you that. I think it will be smaller with myself, particularly because I've had elected officials experience. There's this thing called the Ohio Revised Code that those people, that the commissioners uh, oblige by until you experience that. There's a lot of things that I wanted to do as a public or a private businessman going into public office and it doesn't, it doesn't equate all the time. It doesn't equate. So there will be a learning curve for either one of us. I just think that with the public experience and working for a public, uh, that the transition in my learning curve will be smaller. So, as you know, I'm Bob Graber. I say I'm from the county, for Wayne County, every grassroots common sense ideals of the Wayne County Commissioner. And I thank you for being here. I am excited about this new journey for myself. Um, I am not a politician. I have not been a politician. I am not a farmer. But I have agricultural people that support me. I'm a business leader. I have business people that support me. I know about economic development, about volunteerism. I've served all types of committees and um, supported things around the county, uh, as well as, um, sorry, <laughs> as well as any anybody else has known here that my background in fiscal responsibility will make me a viable candidate to be a county commissioner. I agree, there is no class to be a county commissioner. And um, all you have to do is not have an agenda 
and go in there with open eyes to try to support uh, the county and the county government and make the best decisions for all our residents. Um, I have, like I said, I have agricultural people that support me. I have governmental people that support me. I have business people. I feel that I am the best candidate for the position and I'd like to um, make sure that we look in depth at what's going on and see if we can make some change to support the county, reduce their expenses, and improve the livelihood in Wayne County. Okay, well, thank you. That wraps up to, uh, tonight's forum. Again, thanks to Bob and Becky for putting yourself out here tonight. Um, I think they've both shown that uh, uh, county Republicans have two fine candidates to select from on May 8th. Uh, how about a round of applause for them? reminder that uh, the recordings of uh, tonight's debate will be on our website uh, and look out for, and watch out for continuing coverage of all the contested races both on the state and the local level and the daily record. Uh, and most importantly make sure you get out and vote in the May 8th uh, primary election. So thanks for coming and have safe travels home.